here's a mechanical counter. It contains wheels with 10 digits written on them. Every time we click the button, the wheel on the right rotates one notch. After 10 clicks, it completes a full revolution, and the next wheel rotates one notch, and so on. This counter shows the number of clicks in the familiar decimal base. We can choose other bases. Here's a base 3 counter. Each of its wheels has only three digits. Let's click it, for example, eight times. This is the base 3 representation of the number 8. And here's a base 5 counter. Let's click it 8 times too. This is 8 written in base 5. And here's a different design. We have here three decimal wheels, but they are detached from each other and there's no interaction between them. Each wheel has its own button and we'll add a handle to click them all together. Clicking this handle, all three rotate one notch. This is silly, of course. All we get is the same digit repeated three times, and after 10 clicks, the counter returns to its initial zero state. But here's a variant of the same design. Again, we have detached wheels, but now they have different sizes, 5, 7, and 3. Initially, they all show the same value, but they quickly diverge because of the different sizes. Now let's explore this strange counter. The first question we'll ask is, after how many clicks will it return to zero? Let's show the sequence of states this counter goes through. This is the initial state after zero clicks. This is the state after one click, two clicks, and so on. For convenience, we show the number of clicks in the familiar decimal representation. We can see the wheel on the right returns to zero every three clicks. Or in other words, every time the number of clicks is a multiple of three. The middle wheel returns to zero when the number of clicks is a multiple of seven, and the left wheel on multiples of 5. We want all wheels to return to 0, so we're looking for a number that is a multiple of 5, 7, and 3. And we want the smallest such number. This is called the least common multiple. Because our numbers are primes, the answer is simply their product, 105. So we have here a sequence of 105 different states. Or are they really all different from each other? Perhaps this sequence contains repetitions. Let's prove that it does not. Starting from the initial state, after 40 clicks it reaches a certain state. Let's assume, by way of contradiction, that after 40 additional clicks it reaches the same state again. We know that after 25 more clicks we reach zero, since we have accumulated 105 clicks by now. So this is true also from here. If we start in the same state and perform the same number of clicks, we should end in the same state. But this can't be true. We can't reach zero before 105 clicks. This proves that there can't be any repetitions. This is a sequence of 105 different states. Note that the total number of states this counter has is the number of different ways we can set its wheels. This number is the product of their sizes, 105. So this counter is fully efficient. It passes through all its possible states and then returns to zero. Because of this efficiency, we can consider using it as an alternative method to represent numbers. Let's, for example, click it nine times. It shows four, two, zero. This is the representation of nine in this system. The right wheel shows zero because nine is divisible by three. After another click, it shows one because the remainder of dividing 10 by three is one. We wrote it here using the expression 10 modulo three. The percent sign denotes the modulo operator, which returns the division remainder. So this is what the counter shows the remainders or residues of dividing our number by the size of each wheel. And that's how this method is called residue number system, or RNS. Here's another example. This counter was clicked 32 times. We can verify it by checking the residues. 32 modulo 3 is 2. And we can check the other remainders. We have proved that every number between 0 and 105 has its own unique state. This means each such number has its own unique set of residues. The general form of this statement is called the Chinese remainder theorem. And here's one more example. How many times was this counter clicked? To answer that, we can take another counter and click it until this state shows up. But this might take a while. Here's a better way. If we label the wheels x, y, z, then it can be shown that the following formula retrieves the correct number. The answer is 26. We'll explain the formula at the end of this video. So this number representation system seems to work okay. 
we'll soon ask whether it has any advantages. But first, let's extend it to larger numbers. Here's a counter with wheels of size 6 and 4. Recall the first question we asked. After how many clicks will it return to 0? As before, we need to compute the least common multiple of 6 and 4. 6 can be written as 3 times 2, and 4 is 2 times 2. They share a common prime factor. In the least common multiple, we don't need both of them. So the result is only 12. Let's draw the sequence of states. This counter is inefficient. It returns to 0 after 12 clicks, but it has 24 possible states. We can see it only passes through states that have either two even values or two odd values. The odd even and even odd states are never reached. And here's a counter with sizes 9 and 8. These numbers share no prime factors. Therefore, their least common multiple is their product. This is our only requirement from an RNS counter, and it guarantees it will be fully efficient. Now let's extend our original RNS counter. We can add a wheel of size 8 because we haven't used the prime factor 2 yet. 9 and 10 are not good. 11 is a prime, so it's okay. This wheel has the usual values 0 through 9, but it has one more. It is sometimes denoted by A, but for our purposes we can simply write it in the decimal notation for 10. This will make it easy for us to see this wheel has rotated 10 steps, or that the remainder here is 10. 12 can't be used, and 13 is again okay. This wheel has values for 10, 11, and 12. And let's stop here. This counter has a total capacity of 120,120, a little more than a five-wheel decimal counter. At this pace, they will return to zero after about 12 hours. Here are a few more possible efficient counters. In RNS counters, the order of the wheels is not important. Now let's demonstrate the advantages this method has. Here are two ordinary decimal counters. Say we want to add their values together. Let's recall the algorithm we learned in school, the standard addition algorithm. We start by adding the least significant digits. The result is 12, exceeding the capacity of a single wheel and producing what's called a carry. Now we add the next pair and the carry, producing another carry, and so on. The same algorithm works for other bases. These base 3 counters represent 11 and 8. Let's run the algorithm. Adding 2 plus 2 results in 4, which in base 3 is written 1, 1, producing a carry, and so on. Now let's demonstrate how to add two RNS counters. They represent 17 and 11, so we expect to get an RNS counter representing 28. Let's start with the rightmost pair and add them in the same way as we'd normally add base 3 digits, using the standard algorithm for base 3. We got 1-1 one, one again, but here the carry is not going anywhere and we can discard it. We similarly add the next pair as ordinary base 7 digits, and again we can discard the carry, and so on. And we got the correct result. We can verify that these are indeed the residues of 28. Because we don't need to bother with the carry, we can compute the three digits in parallel and complete the computation faster. So why does this algorithm work? We'll first give a hint about the usual way to prove it works, then we'll give a full answer using a different approach. Let's run it again, column by column. We'll run the standard algorithm and discard the carry. Note that the resulting digit is the sum of the input digits modulo 3. This is because we rotated this wheel two steps and then two more steps, so it landed on 4 modulo 3, which is 1. Similarly for the next pair, the result is the sum of the input digits modulo 7, and so on. Usually, the RNS addition algorithm is defined directly using these formulas. Add the pair of values in each column modulo the size of their wheels. With this definition, it's quite simple to prove the correctness of this algorithm using modular arithmetic. See in the description. But now let's prove it works without mentioning the modulo operator at all. Instead, we'll rely on the correctness of the standard algorithm. Let's start with an observation. This is an RNS counter representing 7, and let's focus on its size 3 wheel. This is a base 3 counter representing the same number, 7. Note that its least significant wheel shows the same value as the RNS counter. This is not a coincidence. 
They have the same size, and every time we click the counters, both of them rotate one step, so they remain in sync. Similarly, the size 7 wheel is equal to the least significant wheel of a base 7 counter, and so is the size 5 wheel. So that's another way to define what an RNS counter is. It's a collection of the least significant wheels of different bases. Now let's look again at an addition exercise with RNS counters. We need to compute an RNS counter representing 24. Let's focus on the base 3 wheels. Here's the same exercise already completed in base 3. The least significant wheel of the counter that represents 14 is the same as the value we see in the corresponding RNS counter. This is always true, as we just noted. So it's also true for the counter that represents 10, and it will be true for the counter that represents 24. When we run the standard algorithm on the RNS digits, we're basically computing the first column of the base 3 exercise, and we obtain the least significant digit of the result. Similarly, for the base 7 wheels, we just need to compute the least significant digit, and similarly for base 5. Having collected all three least significant digits, we now have the full RNS representation of the result. Now let's discuss multiplication. Here's the standard multiplication algorithm. We start with the least significant digits. Their product is 42, again exceeding the capacity of a single wheel, and generating a carry. We continue scanning the top counter, multiplying and adding the last carry. Now we continue to the second digit of the bottom counter, writing the result below this digit, and so on. Finally, we add these three intermediate results. For our purposes, we're interested in the least significant digits. The least significant digit of the final result at the bottom is the sum of the intermediate results. But there's only one intermediate result in this column, so they are the same. Now let's perform multiplication using RNS counters. We'll again focus on one base and use the usual algorithm as reference. To obtain the least significant digit of the result, we just need to run the first step of this algorithm. 2 times 2 is 4, which in base 3 is written 1, 1. And again, we have no use for the carry. We repeat this for base 7 and base 5 and we're done. As before, we can run this in parallel. And we can equivalently describe this algorithm as follows. Multiply the pair of values in each column modulo the size of their wheels. Let's see some examples with larger numbers. We'll conclude with an explanation of the formula we saw before. Here's an RNS counter showing 1, 0, 0. Let's multiply it by 3. This means adding together three copies of this counter. Now let's take an RNS counter with some arbitrary values, 3, 4, 1. Based on the previous observation, we can break it down as follows 3 times 1, 0, 0, 4 times 0, 1, 0, and 1 times 0, 0, 1. Note that we can do basically the same thing with a decimal counter. We can break it down into hundreds, tens, and ones. But here these counters represent different numbers. If we figure out what these are, we'll obtain a general formula. Because our counters show only one and zeros, there is an efficient way to compute the numbers that they represent. See in the description how it's done. And here they are. This formula results in 193. This is correct. If we click our counter 193 times, it will show 3, 4, 1. But usually, we prefer numbers within the first cycle of the counter, so we can add modulo 105 to our formula, and it now results in 88, which is also correct.